all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big P here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Today we're in Leeds, as you can see. The legendary footballer, Billy Bremner, outside the Leeds United ground, that's his statue. Other famous people from Leeds, Prime Minister, Henry Asquith, World War I Prime Minister. Josh Warnett, an undefeated world champion from Leeds. But today we're going to go see somebody called Crawford Ashley, who slides under radar and is not, always, not as well known as the rest. So keep watching. We're here at Crawford's lovely home in uh, West Yorkshire. How are you doing, Crawford? I'm doing absolutely brilliant. Nice to see you again. Yep, I've seen you, you for a too. bit. You all right? Yeah, yeah. I was looking well. I was on top of the world. You know what I mean? Sorry to hear about uh, Jim that you do a bit of coaching at shutting. Well, it's this flipping nonsense that's going on, isn't it? People are believing crap, and what can you do? What do you think to this COVID, Crawford? I think it's a lie. I think it's been a lie from the beginning. And if it's not a lie, we, we've got to live with it. Yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to be locked in our houses 24 hours a day or 23 hours a day, allowed yeah. one day exercise. For what? Is that life? Yeah. I'd rather be dead. Yeah. So to me, it's live your life free. Yeah. I don't live in fear. You know what I mean? The one thing I know I'm going to do is die. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not going to get out of it alive. Yeah. None of us are. So why, so why are we so frightened of it? Yeah. And I just think it's a con just to keep people to shut down the pubs. Why? Because there's so much shit going on. People are getting together to talk about things. Mm. That's where revolutions start in pubs, you see. All right, then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Right then, uh, uh, let's back up a little bit and start on. with the, the Crawford story from the beginning. You took up boxing at what age, Crawford? Seven. I never took it up, I had to do it. Yeah? Yeah, it wasn't one of them debates in our house. My dad said, "We're you're off boxing and that was it, you had to go boxing. So you started at seven, in, in what area, in Leeds? Errol's, yeah, went Errol's. to Montague Burton's ABC, which is now Birmingham Oh, what trainers there then? Tommy Bergen, Dave Buck. Uh, they're the only two I can really remember. remember. Yeah. yeah. There was Wallace Swift. No, I want Wallace Swift. I can't remember. There's some other names, but they're the two. Did you do anything in amateurs? Did you win anything? Yeah, I won the schoolboys twice and junior ABAs twice. Yeah. Yeah. How old were you when you turned pro, Crawford? Uh, about 21. 21? 20, 21. I don't know. I can't remember. And who did you turn pro with as a manager and trainer? Tommy Miller. Tommy Miller, were your trainer manager? No, he was my manager. My trainer was Peter Corman. Peter Corman. Uh, and did you stay with Peter all the way through your career? No. <laughs> no, for um, two and a half years I was with him. Who and trained I, you then? And on my last fight with him, it was against um, Carl Thompson. Carl no. Thompson, no. No one, they were against um, Brian Schumacher. Yeah. And I got a £1,000 for it. And their deal, and the deal I had with them, they took 25% and split between each other. Yeah. They took 25% and then Peter took an extra 10% trainer's fees. <sighs> and I just went, oh, that's good. Oh, well, now you're making some money. I need to get my money. I just thought you had a deal. So yeah. then, didn't the Boxing Board of Control ever ever help you out we, we, when you had issues with payments and problems with managers and, and promoters and things like that? British Boxing Board of Control don't give a shit about boxers. They never no. have. Why not? Why not? Because <laughs> the look is as commodities. Yeah. We're just a piece of meat. And when we've um, no longer served our purpose... They just throw us on the side, even when we're, like, I was the champion. I think I was their champion for four years. I didn't even have a belt, and I didn't defend my title. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, from you look at my record from um, Nicky Piper to Monty Wright. They were the the times I defended my title. Yeah. And the amount of hassle I had with a board. Now, John Morris is a liar. He lied to me face. And he got told. This is John Morris who were head at Boxing Boy yeah, Control before uh, Robert Smith. Yeah, yeah. Before I got not, before the fight with Clements and me and him had a big barn in uh, the weigh-in. And I called him a liar there to his face in front of cameras. Sky's got it. Sky didn't put it out though, did they? No, what they you didn't, said? No. Why would they? Because they're in with border control, aren't they? <laughs> board of no control. Board of no control. That. No, <laughs> I it's like that one. The British yeah. board of no control. It's it's a mafia. It's a what? It's a mafia. It's a mafia cartel. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like putting sanction fees on and that. How much is it now to get a boxing license? It's 700 and odd quid or something with medical in it, yeah. Is like that, that what it is? I think it is. I'm not sure on that. You know what I mean, you, before you used to, you had to have just the medical. Yeah. Now you have to have an eye examination, an yeah. EEG, a CEG, this, that and the third thing. What? Why? For safety reasons, isn't it? To check that you haven't got any damage to your brains and that you can but, see properly and all that. Other right, okay, okay, okay. I agree with that yeah. to a certain extent. But the biggest danger in boxing is mismatches. Yeah. Mismatches are the biggest danger in boxing and it's down to the board and matchmakers. You've got mm. two fighters of equal standard. You're going to get a good fight. Teach boxing. Boxing is a self-defense. Yeah. Yeah. You're scoring people going forward. They're not even in the target, but because they're going forward, they're winning rounds. Fuck off. You know what I mean? Mm. You watch Tyson Fury, um, Wilder won. The man licked him with one, two, three punches in the whole fight and he gets a draw. How, how, how does that, how does... Well, two how, of them rounds were knockdowns, weren't they? So, so they're 10, 8 rounds, aren't they? So that's four points, we, isn't now, it? Now, now, this is another confusion for me, right? The round he got knocked down in, he was winning the round until he got caught with them two punches. He got back up and continued and won the remainder of the round. Yeah. So the man's been hit with two punches and he loses the round by two points. Yeah. How is that? Boxing, isn't it? How, I, I can't get my head around that. So Tyson can hit the man with 50 punches just because he's got a tough head. You know what I mean? He takes two punches and gets put down and he loses the round by two points. Yeah. When you're fighting away from home as well and you're, you're basically fighting up back foot on an Al Heyman show and it's the WBC, everything's stacked against you. You know yourself when you fought on a Don King show... Everybody in boxing industry says you got robbed, didn't you, against Virgil Hill? But it's it's what but when they you did. fought Don <laughs> Michael Nunn, you, you didn't get robbed, didn't you? You you, you got stopped, didn't you? But you you, but you got robbed against Hill, like, didn't you? With all them fighters who go away, people don't realise what kind of strokes they pull. Yeah, I see Michael what you mean. Nunn. I was going down to super middleweight, twelve stone. My weight was twelve seven. I had no access to any scales. Mm. So it was all guesswork. They never took us to a gym. We had to find our own gym. So we had no access to training. We was over there for 10 days. Yeah. We were messed about. Didn't, uh, where did you train over there then when you fought Michael Nunn? Because did Don King not give you was, the gym? No. Um, Bob, my trainer at the time, he um, got in touch with the police because they always have a gym. And police took us to their, that gym and we trained in that one. Yeah. But... It was like, wait a minute, this is the best pound for pound fighter in the world. I've took the fight at three weeks notice. I'm not even in that weight group. And yet they're still pulling these strokes. Who were your promoter at the time? Um, I just left um, Eastwood and I went with Warren. Frank Warren? Yeah. And I got 19 grand and they stole three grand off me. 
You got 19 grand to fight Michael Nunn, a pound for pound superstar, on a Don King show, and they give you in 16. F- at three weeks' notice. At three weeks' notice in a weight class less than what you were fighting at. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Frank Warren should be ashamed of his son, shouldn't he? Um, yeah and no. Because that fight for me was the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. Yeah, I've gone in with the best pound for pound fighter in the world. Mm. How good am I? Yeah. I don't know. But he showed me something. He showed me an hell of a lot. And I'm glad I went in with it. And I'm glad I took the fight. When did you realise in the fight with Michael Nunn that I spoke to Clinton about this when he fought mm. Roy Jones. But when did you realise in the ring with Michael Nunn that this guy's hard to figure out? What what couldn't you figure out about him? I couldn't hit him. You couldn't hit him? <laughs> yeah, that's a good answer, that, isn't it? <laughs> I just couldn't hit him. I just... I, I thought I had him. And they're like, you know when you've hit somebody, you yeah. can feel it. But every time I seemed to hit him, he seemed to ride the shot. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? It was like, there was no, nothing on the end of my gloves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Throwing these punches and nothing on the end of my gloves and his face never changed. He just... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, let's back up a little bit then because what were the first belt that you won, Crawford? Central area. Who did you beat for that? Uh, Carl Thompson. Carl Thompson. Yeah. And he went on to win a world t- well, a couple of world titles, didn't he? He was unbeaten when I boxed him. Yeah. So you yeah. took Carl Thompson's O. Yeah. And at the time, I think he were, was he the world Muay Thai champion at the time? Something like that. Something he, like that. He was trained by Chris Aston, wasn't he? For Muay no, Thai, was it? Or? I don't know. No, it was... Um, I'm sure Chris Aston trained for Muay Thai. I don't know, but it wasn't... It was a little, um, like, um, Thai guy... Or was his trainer? Yeah, oh, oh. In his corner. I might have that wrong. I could have sworn Chris Aston trained him. No, this is right. Like I say, it was his, his eighth fight. Oh, yeah. He'd, he'd won eight. I no, I meant the Muay Thai, like. Yeah. I think, I'm sure Chris I Aston don't know. trained I'm not interested in that nonsense, man. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm just, just saying, he's a tough yeah. man, Monty Carl Thompson. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was it an hard fight for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say. No, yeah. So you well, like. <laughs> he hit me in the first round and he put me down. Yeah. Boom. And I'm on the floor. And I always hear voices and the voice in me had said, it's going to get harder than this, but we're going to win. So yeah. I got her up. And I remember putting him down. And then I remember getting tired and I heard ding, ding. And I've gone back to the corner and I've sat in the corner and gone, fucking hell, man, that were a long first round. He went, you silly cunt, you're coming out for six. I went, I'm a winner. He went, no. And I went out there and I just started boxing. Yeah. And I jabbed him. And he, to me, he gave up. Broke yeah. his heart. Give up. Did you feel that fighting Carl Thompson and getting dropped by him and actually making him, I wouldn't say he quit, but just, he got pulled out, didn't he, by his corner, didn't he? No, he quit. He quit, did he? Yeah, he turned. I've got it on DVD somewhere. All right. Well, and did I'll you, show you I'll, when I go to Jamaica? I'll get it. Yeah. I'll bring you back and I'll show you it. Did you feel that were you getting dropped by Carl Thompson and getting up and winning the fight and making him quit, as you say? Did you feel that that were character building for you at the time? For me, yeah. Nah. Now, what did you feel then? I just felt like he hit me too hard, man. He hit I you got, too hard. <laughs> no, to me, we was always taught, if I'm getting it, I'm doing something wrong. I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. I made a mistake. I got caught. Boom. I got put on my ass. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not supposed to get hit when I get in the ring. Yeah. That's it. My job is to hit you, not to get hit. That's why none was so good, because I can't fucking hit him. Mm. All right, then. Uh, after that belt, which belt did you win then? Because there were no... English belt at the time, no, other it were British no. after that, wasn't it? Yeah. Who did you fight for the British title and the first one was um Roy Skeldon. And how did you do in that fight? Stopped him in seven. Yeah, where were that at? Uh Dudley. Dudley Town Hall. Dudley Town Hall. Yeah. I could have um I could have stopped him earlier. And how did it feel to have that Lonsdale belt around you? Brilliant. So, <laughs> Actually, no, I just felt like it was always mine. Yeah. 
It was weird. It was, I went into boxing and I had two ambitions. One was to become a Lonsdale belt owner. Yeah. And when I retired to not make any comebacks, there were the only two things I got. And I got the Lonsdale belt. When I won it, it just seemed like it were mine. It was always meant to be mine. Yeah. You know, when you find something that belongs to you, it's, it's nice to have it back in it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and you you went on to win Commonwealth as well, didn't you? Yeah. Who did you beat for that? The first well, the first time I boxed for the Commonwealth. No, what did the Commonwealth? The European, I think it was. I can't remember. Well, more. when you fought Clinton Woods, you defended all belts against Clinton, British Commonwealth, and European. European yeah. you, you remember that, yeah, don't yeah, you, Clinton? Yeah. yeah. What do you think, Al? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> it's like I've got Alzheimer's, man. I, mean, I just, I just get no, the time no, just, mixed up. No, well, no, yeah, it's okay, mate. It's okay, but uh, I do know you had all three belts because yeah. no, the winner of you and Clinton were going to fight Roy Jones, weren't they? All going to be in that mix to. So, wait a minute. Every time I had a fight, I was going to fight Roy Jones next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I mean, it's, um, I don't know where I don't know where the Commonwealth goes, and I don't know where the. I boxed Jimmy Peters is when I give gave up the title. Then I got it back against um, Nicky Piper, but I boxed none between them two fights. No, I didn't. After the none, because I left Eastwood and went with Warren, so I boxed the none fight. And then a box Piper, I think. See, you should have had notes, then you could have had. A I'm trying you? to do it off cuff because I think yeah. if you come with notes, I, I think it's all a bit too organised and a bit. If you do it off cuff, like you're talking in a pub with yeah. somebody, you don't know this where is where we try. To, we try to be different. Yeah. Obviously, I'm. Well, we I'm, just, I'm just a bit confused because other people will be able to tell me, but. No, but we can sit here and, and James yeah. here can ed edit it all and we can all make it all look good mm. and like we're all professional. But how I want <laughs> how I like to do it is off cuff. I mean, mm. odd time I have notes when I'm at home and I'm being yeah. questioned, but I'm trying to do it off cuff. So, because like I've known you a while now and we mm. get on, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I just think that you've had a great career and I think you've gone under radar. You don't seem to get mentioned. No, I was, um, some, somebody was saying to me a while ago about, there were a com conversation about boxings in Leeds and I never got mentioned. Yeah. And I just started to laugh and he says, why? He says, because when I'm at home, I'm Gary Crawford. Yeah. When I'm boxing, I'm Crawford Ashley. The two separate people. Yeah. Or they seem to be. It's like when I won the British title, I'm in the Ford Green. And one of the... Ford Green at Aerials. Yeah. Yeah, my local. <laughs> top Tap room. <clears throat> no, I was upstairs in um, pool room. And one of the ladies came over and she gave me a big hug. <clears throat> I'm have a drink. And she went, I never knew you were a boxer. And I went, that's the biggest compliment you could have ever given me. Never. Mm. She'd known me for about five years. Yeah. And it's like, who a boxer's supposed to be and what they're supposed to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Are we bullies? Because that's all we we made out to be. Mm. And I was taught it's all about respect. Yeah. You know and I mean, it's a privilege to be able to box. I can beat people up. Yeah. And get paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> Who did you win for European title then, Crawford? You see, this is where I'm getting confused now because I remember boxing um, Yowie Davis in Italy and getting a draw. So I didn't have it then. That means it's a win though, doesn't it? Do you want me to have a look on box right? <laughs> no, no, it's a draw, it was a draw. Yeah. You know what I mean? They give it a draw. And that's why I fell out with Eastwood. Yeah. Because I was supposed to fight a return with him in Leeds for 10 grand. Yeah. But Eastwood sold it back to the Italians mm. and were only going to give me 10 grand. I said, no, that was for me to box in my own town. Yeah. But nah, so I fell out. I fell out with him over that. <clears throat> do you, do you yeah. remember when you were you were going to fight Clinton and 
uh, obviously, I, I know I do know a little bit about that story because obviously I worked with Dennis for over five years and they timed it perfectly, the fight with you, didn't they? Because Dennis came to watch you and, and he said he, he thought that you were maybe a six round fighter. You know, you, you maybe couldn't do the distance and Clinton were mm. a bit younger than you wanted and he, he could do the rounds. And, but you came out at blocks for against Clinton and basically broke his nose, didn't you? And set about I, him, didn't I you? Wish I wish I had No, it was one of them. Well, you broke his nose, didn't you? It was, it was just one of them things on the night. He got, he got everything I had. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Um, if you both fought well, but you got tired, didn't you? Bob threw the towel in. Yeah. So he'd seen some, it's... Yeah. I don't want to, all I want to say is like, I went in there on the night and I gave my best. All yeah. My, everybody was saying, you're putting three belts on the line. Yeah, you, don't you, have you did, to, yeah. You don't have to do that. And I just said, if the man beats me, he deserves all three. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going in there and I'm giving 100% of what I've got. Yeah. We could box 10 times. He might beat me two out of the 10. But that night, he beat me. Did you feel then that you were, you got, got to the top of it and you were coming down then, did you think? <sighs> kind of. But there was a lot going on in my life when it was... Yeah. It wasn't a good place to be for yeah. me. But after that fight, I went from 12 stone 7 to... 18 stone in three weeks. He put seven and a half stone on? In three weeks. In three weeks? Yeah. What were you eating? I was just eating normal. Yeah? Just, yeah? just eating normal, having a drink. I didn't, I never binge on anything. Oh. My body just had enough of just <laughs> rebelled against me. Yeah. And then I was blown up to 22 stone, which was frightening, man. Scary. Yeah. Yeah. You blew up to what? 22 22 stone. Clem? Yeah. <sighs> well, that's big, isn't it, that? 22 Clementines. I was 28, yeah. me, so yeah. I'm half at man now, but yeah. if you get uh, a bit of depression or you've got, you're have got not exercising, eating wrong food at wrong time mm. and drinking and takeaways, it soon adds up, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, in, in last interview we did, everybody said you were joking and that, but... When you said that if you'd had a gun, you'd have shot Frank Warren, did you mean that or were you just upset no. over how you were trapped? No, back in the time, boxing was my life. Yeah. And this man was stopping me from boxing. Yeah. I was skint, I was on my ass, and I just thought, if I'm never going to box again now to him, I might as well just kill him. <laughs> is that what you felt? Yeah, yeah no, that is actually how I felt. If my life's over, his life's going to be fucking over. Yeah. And if I had enough money for a gun, I'd have got one and I'd have done it. Yeah. But I had doing it behind closed doors. I had hiding from it. I'd have done it right in front of all the TV cameras on a show. They'd gone, Frank, I want a word with you. What? Bang, bang, bang. Stay the fuck out of my life. And I wouldn't have ran. I'd have sold them. And I'd have stood up in court and I'd have... Yeah, I shot him, and this is the reason why, because he was in my life. Yeah. He wouldn't let me get on and live in. And people don't realise that I've always had a death wish. I don't give a flying frig. Mm. Let me live my life on my terms. Everybody's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, mm. I'm, I'm here for a laugh. Strong words, them joke. Crawford, aren't they, though? What? Them, that, what? I'm just saying they're the strong words, but it's how you felt at the time, isn't it? No, it's how of, I don't like bullies. I don't yeah. like people who have control over people's lives. And you're not going to have control over my life. Yeah. Nobody's having any control over my life. I don't look over my shoulder. I've got nobody following me. Yeah. Because I deal with everything head on. That's why I like boxing, because yeah. the man who's hitting me is the man in front of me. Mm. So if he's giving me problems, what have I got to do? I've got to get him out of the way. Yeah. Now... That's just my life. And yeah. if somebody's giving me problems, all I do is just move. Yeah. Don't follow me. Because I'm going somewhere else. Yeah. I'm going to live my life. In, you live your life free. I live my life free. Just leave me alone. Yeah. What made you retire yeah. then? Age. Age, yeah. 
yeah, the last fight I was just just too slow. Yeah. I was seeing openings and I just went fast enough and it was just one of them. The level I want to compete at, if I make a mistake, I should be put to sleep because if you make a mistake, I'm going to put you to sleep. Yeah. And I couldn't compete at that level anymore. I was making too many mistakes. Yeah. So I, I just gave it up. Yeah. Tell me about the Nicky Piper fight because wasn't there a problem with board or something with that or some belt or something? I can't. Oh, man. That fucking pissed me off, did that. Uh, I boxed Nicky Piper. We all know what happened there. I won the yeah. fight. And I've got the belt. Now, yes. I'm in the dressing room and the board official comes in. He says, Crawford, we've come for the belt. I says, what? He says, you've already got one. I says, yeah, but that's mine. That's outright. That's mine. That belongs to me. Yeah. He went, yeah, but this one. I said, so this one's mine now. Mm. He went, oh, no, we need it back. I said, what do you mean you need it back? He says, oh, we need it back. I said, so can I ask you a question? I said, if Nicky Piper had won this belt tonight, would he have took it home? He went, yeah. I said, so this is my belt. He went, oh no, we need it back. I just went, no, fucking take it. Stick up your ass. I should have kept it. I said, phone the police. We'll I, so haven't you got a Lonsdale belt then? No, I've got my Lonsdale belt. You've got belt, your Lonsdale belt. But then they said that you could only win one at the weight. Yeah. Oh, that would have been a second one, wouldn't it? Yeah, that was the second one. But yeah. I'm a brand new. Well, Henry Cooper had four, didn't he? Didn't he? Three. Four Lonsdale belts. I think I'm he sure. was three, and Tom Collins had two. Yeah. But then they changed the ruling. Mm. Well, that's pretty Collins sad, in. isn't it? Nice. Were you glad to get out of boxing at the time? I did. Hardest decision I've ever made. Yeah. But the best one. Yeah. Yeah, definitely the best one. You know what I mean? It was. Um, I thought boxing was on the slide on the slide. You know, when you've got fighters who avoid fighters. I it never used to be like that, but then Tommy Earns pulled out on me twice. Roy Jones avoided me, sidestepped me. And I just think, how can you do that? And then you've got yeah. the likes of Virgil Hill pulling strokes like that. And I just thought world champions are the best fighters in the world. Yeah. <laughs> sad, Tell me it? about Tommy Earns' fight because there's a bit of a story to that, isn't there? Where, where you were going to fight him? How did that come about? I was in the office and um, Tony Breen got a phone call, so he's put it on speaker, and I didn't know it was uh, Manuel Stewart. Does Crawford actually want to fight Tommy Earns? And I just cracked out laughing. So Tony says, "Oh, it's Crawford's in the office with me, Manny." Um, why, why are you laughing? I says, Tommy don't want to fight me. He's pulled out on me twice. So then he started to splutter. Did the um, thing. I said, I'll tell you what. Give me 10 grand and I'll sign the contract. They wired me $10,000, signed the contract, went into training. But we had to go over to do a press conference. In America? In, Ameri in Detroit. Went over there trying to put all this. Impress me. Yeah. Shit. And then when I got back, went into training a week before I was supposed to fly out there. The fight's been called off, and they said I pulled out with a torn rotor cuff. And did you? Fuck off, man. No. Nah. They pulled out, didn't they? They pulled out and then blamed me, and that pissed me right off. And didn't the fight get made again, though? No. No, it never got made again, though. No. I was supposed to get a boxer guy called Eddie Smulders for the European title. Yeah. And I was in the Henry Cooper gym in London, and the guy came in, he said, the fight's going to get called off. Three days before the fight, he's going to have flu. I got told this three weeks before. Yeah. Phoned up um, DBU. Oh no, that's not. Three week, three days before we were supposed to fight, it got a flu. Got a doctor's not. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
So. And then I got told again that I wasn't going to fight. Yeah. I told the board, um, they says, no, he is. We've got the contract signed, blah, blah, blah. He pulled out and I think he fought for a world title. Yeah. Why can't you tell me, why am I going in training, wasting my money, getting ready, preparing? Because it's meal pays for the sparring partners. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then pull out. I've got no time for cowards. If you oh. make a fight, fight. Yeah. All right then. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, moving on then. So, mm. are you happy with area belt, British, Commonwealth, European? Obviously, you, you've beaten world champions and you got robbed against Virgil, you've been in with Michael and pound for pound. Are you happy with what you achieved in boxing? Obviously, you won that titles as an amateur as well. Are you happy? Yeah. Yeah. I boxed everybody who'd box me. Yeah. Can't box people who don't want to box You me. sparred uh, my friend Peter Fury, didn't you? Long time ago. Yeah. Long time ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, sa he said, uh, Long time he said ago. you could punch, yeah. <laughs> no, it's like... I was always told in 1993 to, that was I always I was always told to punch fast yeah you know what I mean because that's where the power comes from yeah mm. find that kind of funny how people always want to punch hard yeah but, you never fought Henry Wharton did you uh, he didn't want to fight me yeah you know what I mean and that's that's kind of a signal it's time for a fight fight yeah but if you haven't got the art for the game you know what I mean? You can't make somebody fight, can you? Yeah. What do you think about the uh, boxing today? Do you think fighters uh, are being taught correctly or do you think that no. some of them are going into fights and they're not prepared? I think they've lost the art of boxing for me. It seems like a lot of trainers don't know what boxing's about. Mm. And it's the self-defense I've got this certain way of doing it. It's like, I can't believe how, well, I can actually, because I said it a while ago, I could take any fighter and train him from zero in five years to a world champion. Yeah. And people say, why? I said, because all they need is a jab. Yeah. And over the last couple of championships, the only thing that won the fight was a jab. You mean like Joyce against Dubois and yeah. Arthur against Yard? Yeah. And why is that? Is because most fighters are trained, this is where they've got their hand stuck to the chin. See ya, stuck to the chin. And I'm like, eh? Why? So we was called out, oh, you're answering telephone again. Now your hands there, <laughs> yeah. why ain't it there in front of your face? Mm. And it's like, you know, I trained my son for you. And he went to York and we were training and he was telling me, we were having a discussion and he was saying, the trainers, if you don't got your hand there, you have to do 10 press-ups. Yeah. And I'm like, why? Because it seems like pros throw a lot of hooks. I'm just, uh, so the jab will get there a lot quicker than any hook. Yeah. Yeah. And all you need to do is just keep them doing that. Once you've got them off balance, they yeah. can't generate any power. Mm. What fighters do you rate today, Crawford, that are fighting today? And what fighters have you rated over the last 10 years? Uh, well, I'm, I'd say the last 10 years aren't rated many fighters. No? No. Oh, in the last 10, no? Because in the last 10, I haven't really been that bothered about boxing. Yeah. But there's a guy called Kaylee Plant. Yeah, you rate him? I like him. Yeah. Have you seen him? Yeah, I've seen him, yeah, super yeah. middleweight. The Canadian, yeah. Why ain't Canelo calling him out? Cause probably because it's an hard fight, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> why ain't he calling, why ain't he calling Beta beat Beef out? Yeah, I mean, it's like, I just, to me, it just makes me laugh because most of these fights, it's all about who the fighter wants to fight, not who the, the fans want to see. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, there's got to be more fighters queuing up for Canelo, why don't them not fight each other? Yeah. If, the, if Canelo's a top man, why don't you lot organise yourself, fight each other for mm. the right to fight him? Yeah. 
It's like, for me, Tyson Fury, AJ, after the winner of that one, all the other champions should be fighting each other to fight the winner of that one. Well, that's where they have rankings and eliminators and final eliminators, isn't it, really? But they never seem to get round to them and there's always politics, isn't there? There's so many politics involved. Yeah. And it's like, who does the rankings? Yeah. Well, this is what it's annoying. It's like, for me, with the internet now, you could have people all over the world who follow boxing, who have their rankings and rank fighters in their orders yeah. and with the internet now it can so many people vote and you vote on who's the top not the wbc i'll make a phone call oh yeah i want my fire putting in the top 10 yeah all right then we'll get him in there because that's how it works yeah you know what i mean how do you get in the top 10 i make a phone call that's what eastwood said to me yeah that's the, the means that the lot they're lobbying in it the e lobbies yeah. Yeah. But does he lobby rightly or does he give cash to get him in there? I don't know. Perks <laughs> of the trade, you know what I mean? It's all these things. And to me, the fans lose out. Yeah. You know, it's like, I liked, um, and I still do like him, Lomachenko. Lomachenko, yeah. Yeah. Do you think he bit too much off moving up them weights? You know, because he just got beat, innit? Do you think he, he just went a bit too high in the weight for what his frame is, his body? No, nah, he just boxed some you knew out of box. Yeah. This is, it's like, um, a lot of the things that I see Lomachenko doing, there was, when I was a kid, there was a lot of people pulling tricks like that off. Yeah. You know, because Ali was around, Wally. Wally, yeah. Wally. Ali was around and he was basically doing things that are in the textbooks. Yeah, so that leaning back thing that he used to do and yeah. stuff like that and going backwards, running really fast backwards. Yeah, and throwing punches. Throwing punches as well. Yeah, it's coming in. So it's like, and then just standing there with your hands down and in the corners and slipping Sonny punches. Sonny Liston didn't know what to do with him, did he? No, confuse him. So no matter how hard you punch if you can't hit, Mm. Is he your yeah. favourite fighter of all time, Muhammad Ali? Yeah, yeah. Who was your second favourite best fighter? Probably Holyfield. Evander Holyfield, yeah. But the thing is, is you know, we're talking about fighters or we're talking about boxers? Well, Ali was a boxer, wasn't he? But he Ali was a boxer, yeah. Um, Holyfield were probably both, wasn't he? Yeah, uh, a box fighter. Yeah, what would you say your style were, Crawford? I'd say a boxer fighter. A boxer fighter, yeah. Yeah. Because you could bang, couldn't you? No, it's like I went in there to hit you. Yeah. No, it was... My philosophy was it was a very dangerous place in the ring. Yeah. So for me to get you out as quick as possible is the best thing. Yeah. So if I can take out in the first round, I'm taking you out. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't want to be in there longer than I have to be in there. Yeah. So... That's my philosophy. But I don't like this thing about man's running. You if don't he, like what? This when people say he's running, he's running like you said about all he did was run, run, run. I'm thinking, wait a minute. No, I didn't mean he ran all the time, but he did like, he used he to run. go backwards a lot, didn't no, he? No, but AJ in his last fight when he ran against... Um, Ruiz. Ruiz. I didn't call that running. That to me was boxing. Mm. Take a step back, but to me, you should be throwing more punches. Take a step back, then throw punches. You think that AJ is not one hundred percent? He's just getting it back together now from when he got beat by Ruiz the first time. And I just think that Ruiz fight was one of them. He went in there with that mental attitude. He just had to turn up. Yeah, the fight was his. You know what I mean? He seen the shape Ruiz was in, and he just couldn't believe this man could beat him. Yeah, he's gone in there with this attitude and then he's found out he's in a fight and now he's in a fight his mind can't switch back onto that mode you know what I mean oh fucking hell man I didn't realise it was going to be this hard mm. switching it back on you're not there and then you but I think you learnt you think that happened that'll happen to Daniel Dubois do you think he just he'd never been in that situation before because of experience and you think it'll either make him or break him 
No, I think that Daniel Dubois was just in with a guy who couldn't take his jab away from him. Yeah. I thought Dubois were going to beat him, but I just didn't realise that he didn't have the technical skill to take a man's jab away from him. Is that what you think it were, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. It's like Theo says to me, but Joyce's head don't move, Dad. I said, yeah. I said, so you're not going to knock him out, so just outbox him. Mm. Just stay away from him. You know what I mean? Go to the outside of his jab. Throw combinations, move, step back. But you have to be busy. You have to be busy. Mm. Can't stay still. And he couldn't take his jab. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't get involved with a guy like that fighting. Do you give respect to Frank Warren for putting that fight on, though, Dubois Joyce? Because it was a brave fight to put on, wasn't it, for Dubois? Why? Because the a young kid, isn't it? You see, I don't get this thing. It's like the man's lost. He could be the making of him. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's You're in there with two human beings, you know what I mean? And they're going yeah. at it and they want to win. Who cares who wins? The winner should win. The loser, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, come back again. Yeah. You know what I mean? And why don't, oh, he's lost, he's useless, this, this is a bum. Shut up, man. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Billy Joe Saunders? Do you think he'll fight Canelo next? Uh, I think Billy Joe Saunders needs to clear up the division first. Yeah. And get I mean, some more belts like Kellogg Plant and there's other yeah there's other fights out there why is he looking for this one fight would you like to see him rematch Chris Eubank Jr no I mean, the Chris Eubanks Jr fight and um, will be the same again it will it yeah I think so yeah I who don't do think... you think won the first one Saunders yeah split decision on it yeah it's like I don't think Chris will ever reach his full potential. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's trying too hard to be like his dad. Yeah. The attitude, the this, the that, and this thing. There can only be one Chris Eubanks. Yeah. You know what I mean? We don't need two knobheads to win. What do you think about Conor Ben? Do you think he can win a world title? I like Conor Ben. You like him, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just seems like he's just settled down with his work. Yeah, he's but improved, like, hasn't he? Yeah. But I also liked his dad. Did I you? Mean, yeah. Not, oh, yeah, no messing about with Nigel. Did you ever spar Nigel? No. 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 Who's hardest sparring you've ever had? Victor Cordova. Victor Cordova. Mm. Who's hardest puncher that's ever hit you? Clemenson. No. No. Rothman. Who? Sebastian Rothman. Sebastian Rothman. Yeah. He hard puncher, yeah. He hit me that hard, I had in a dick for five years, man. Five years? So you, you, no, seriously, I, I had frigging joking, man. I had it in a dick for five years, man. All right, then. Uh, you've, had some, you've had some problems, haven't you, last so many years. You had a bike crash, didn't you, where you nearly died? <clears throat> yeah, that wasn't, a, that wasn't an accident. Oh, and it, did you just crash bike on purpose? Mm. Yeah. Were things getting too much for you, like, at that time? I was tired, man. Yeah. I just wanted to go. I, I just wanted to rest. I was just so I was in so much pain, so much mental pain you mean though? More mental, physical, emotional and all everything that. man, I was just at the end. It's uh boxing, it's one of them sports where that it's Sp got a human element up. to it, hasn't it? A human element to it afterwards. The fighters are they're not, there's no pensions for them and any, anything like that. And one, you, one day you cock of the walk, the next a feather duster, aren't you? <laughs> um, if that's what I don't, I think, like you said about the board, they don't give a shit about boxers. Yeah. They never have done. Um, there's so much money involved in boxing that they could have done something. It's like, why not have like an at home, not at home. Somewhere like a retreat, you know, like a spa where all 
A bit it's, like a sporting chance clinic, what Tony Adams has got, where alcoholics and drug addicts go there, and people who've had fallen on hard times to get their act together. Something like that, do you mean? Like a clinic, not a clinic, but something like a bit of an hotel sort of thing. Yeah, it's something like an hotel, like a spa where they can yeah. go and they can reminisce about their old days. And, yeah. You know what I mean? There's a gym there, there's doctors. Chill out and that. Yeah. Is that with your name, wasn't it? Yeah. The chilling. chilling. Yeah, well, I thought it was just really apt for me because it's like most of the time I'm just chilling. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, all right then, well, listen, it's been great talking to you. Yeah. I've enjoyed it. I always enjoy coming here. I used to drive home from here with Snoop Doggy Dog full blast on car oh. with sunshine, but it's not that. I have got that today, have we? No, we just got cold. Just got cold. I don't like the cold. But <laughs> thank you very much. You're for welcome. Having us, the top man. Yep. There we go. Oh, nearly broke some. I asked her if the world was round or flat. Yeah. And she went, "Dad, the earth round. Your world is flat." Yeah. And I just cracked out laughing because nobody can prove it's round. And nobody can prove it's flat. Yeah. Now, my idea and my philosophy, because I've looked into it a lot, <clears throat> is we live in a crater. The Earth's a lot bigger yeah. than what it, we've been told it is. Yeah. And we live in a crater on the top of it. So that's my theory. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. That. What's your uh, YouTube channel called, Crawford? It's called Crawford Ashley, the Spiritual Boxer. YouTube. And it's about boxing. Um, I don't really go into many politics on what's going on. I just try and talk more about the technique and what I learned from it and the, um, the spiritual side of it, how you become connected with yourself. But you can become connected with yourself doing any physical activity or just being in the moment. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, that. Yeah. Which is about being in the moment. Yeah. It's about living in the now. Yeah. When you're in the ring, you can't live in till tomorrow because you get your ass knocked out. Yeah. So you've got to be in the moment, be in this bubble right now. And the best thing about that, being in the now, because you don't need anything yeah. right here, right now. Am I hungry? No. If I was hungry, I'd get something to eat. Am I cold? Yes, I'll put my coat on. And yeah. I'm back out. Don't yeah. need no worries. Well, I enjoyed that uh, with Crawford. He's, uh, he's a character. I like him. And uh, it's always nice to come and see him and listen to his uh, opinions on boxing and his career and that. I think he downplays his uh, career actually to what it were. I mean, stop Carl Thompson, British Commonwealth European champion, robbed in a world title fight against Don King, uh, outclassed against Michael Nung, a pound for pound king at the time. I think he's had a, I think he's had a good, good career and I think he should big himself up a bit more. There's a lot of people who haven't done what Crawford's done and they're all over the TV every single day when I look. I mean, it's all messed up. But thanks for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed it and keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. Peace out.